So I get asked all sorts of questions on my YouTube channel with the most common question being, why is your nose so big? First of all, rude. Second, that doesn't even pertain to cars, you dicks. But the second most common question is, what mod is this on the C5 Corvette? What mod is that on the C5 Corvette? Why are you so awkward on camera? And today I'm gonna answer those car related questions as I probably should have made one of these videos a long time ago, explaining to you guys all the mods that I have on my C5 Corvette. That's, that's my bad, I got busy. Now the C5 Corvette in general is an amazing car. It's an amazing platform to build off of, but it's also an amazing car bone stock. All of the mods that I've done to this thing so far are really just to update it. It's to make my 20 year old Corvette not seem like a 20 year old Corvette. It's all pretty tasteful stuff, nothing crazy, nothing too, too expensive. And yes, yes, I know you keyboard warriors are typing away. I have had my fair share of problems with this thing, but none of those are uncommon problems for the C5. The fixes weren't terribly expensive and I hope the majority of them are fixed now. <laughs> I, I sure hope. All right, so we'll start at the rear of the C5 with the Sharplight Innovations Halo LED taillights. Now these were one of the first mods that I, actually they were the first mod that I had on this thing. These were the mod that I wanted the most. When I finally decided on a C5, that was the first mod that I wanted. I think these things look amazing on the car. They're just, oh, they probably don't look anywhere near as cool as they do at night right now because it's obviously sunny out. But hands down, one of my favorite mods. It was the first mod that I personally did to the C5. Sharplight Innovations, best in the game and the best looking taillights you can get for the C5. All right, so continuing with the exterior, we move to the front with more Sharplight Innovations. So down below, we have the Sharplight Innovations LED fog lights you can see in there. Very, very, very bright at night look amazing during the day as well. And then on the sides, we have LED daytime running lights, again from Sharplight Innovations. You can see the trend here. Those are actually probably the mod that I get asked the most about for the C5. And I can't blame you because these things look incredible. Let me go inside, switch them to orange real quick. So when they're regular daytime running lights, they are just orange. They look absolutely insane. What an upgrade from the boring, hideous daytime running lights slash corner marker lights, whatever you want to call them, on the C5. Let's get the headlights popped up here so you can see more sharp light innovations. So these are the Bi LED headlights. These things are absolutely insane. I say it in every single C5 Corvette video that I make where I mention the headlights. These headlights are like driving around with the headlights off of a brand new BMW strapped to the front of your 20 year old Corvette. The cutoff pattern is insane, matched with the bright LED fog lights and the daytime running lights, the corner marker lights. The amount of light output out of the front of this is nuts. 20 times better than the dinky factory lights on a C5. Continuing on the front here, we have the C6 ZR1 style front splitter from Kabuck Auto. Again, this is one of those mods that I knew that I wanted when I was getting the C5. It was, that was like the second or third mod that I actually did. Some people hate the look of it. I happen to love it. I love the C6 ZR1. So I think the addition of the C6 ZR1 front splitter on the C5, I think it looks really, really good. And I don't have to worry about cooling issues because I left, as you can see, the factory front air dam is still down there. People run into overheating issues with these because they remove those when they put on the new front lip. And last up for the exterior is the wheels. Now these are base C6 Corvette wheels straight off of a C6 Corvette. They bolt right up. Instead of having 17 and 18 inch wheels, you then get 18 and 19 inch with the C6 wheels. On the front, I'm not running any sort of spacer or anything. And I'll show you how the wheel sits in the wheel well. But on the back, I do get beautiful, beautiful fitment, but that's because I'm gonna take a peek in here. I'm running a giant spacer. <laughs> now, before the keyboard warriors make themselves present again, first of all, these are a hub centric spacer. So that means you bolt them on with five lug nuts before you actually put the wheel on and then bolt that up with five lug nuts. That's the safest kind of spacer to use. As for the dimensions, I did get these from my uncle who builds hot rods. 
I wasn't sure the exact dimensions. Obviously it's a C5 Corvette bolt pattern. I believe it's an inch and a half spacer. Actually, let me go measure quick. One pair of pants later. Can confirm it's like an inch and a half spacer. I'll measure it for real and actually link it down in the description below and let you guys know what the actual measurements are. And I wasn't too fond on running a spacer either, but I've driven this thing thousands of miles now and not very easy miles and they've held up fantastic. So spacers can be good. Now, I don't know if you'd even consider this a mod, but I do have yellow brake calipers and those were painted by the very talented and very handsome Jake himself. Now let's look under the hood and go over some of the performance mods. So there's not really a ton done under here and sorry that it's so dirty. I actually drive my Corvette instead of wiping it with a diaper. Up front we have the Corvette mods dual Ram air intake. That actually came on the car when I bought it. Not like an intake is very hard to do and I might change that out eventually. I don't think it's the best looking thing in the world and those filters are looking kind of dingy now. But obviously it does the trick and it's less restrictive than the factory air box. Next, down below where you can't see, down in there, is an ATI super damper. So if you guys have been following along with the C5 Trilogy, you'll know that last, actually last year around this time, uh, my harmonic balancer gave way. Again, stuck on the side of the road with the C5. I have no idea why it's doing this. Uh, it left me stranded in the middle of a rally just outside of Boston. It was very embarrassing. But the harmonic balancer coming apart on these things is actually rather common. Chevy, you suck. You should have fixed this. You knew it was a problem. Get off of me, bug. So the ATI Super Damper is the best harmonic balancer in the game. Yes, it is costly, but you can either use the best parts and pay to fix it once or fix it yourself once, or you can not. So another engine mod that you can't see in here is the car was tuned by Alex from Granite State Dyno. He did an amazing job with this thing. We got just about 330 wheel horsepower out of it with a simple intake and cat back exhaust. I'll explain the cat back after. Prior to his tune, I think it put down three, I can't remember, I'll put the numbers down below. So crank horsepower, now we're around 380. <laughs> great guy he does great stuff and he does a lot of corvette work and gm in general so if you have a corvette ctsv or anything really he can tune it go check him out all right so the last performance mod we have is the slp loudmouth exhaust as you can see the tips just a little bit uneven i'm not a huge fan of the exhaust tips of the slp system i didn't really buy it for the look of the tips i bought it because it doesn't have mufflers it's essentially straight pipes. They do give you these little tiny silencers that go like in the actual pipe and you can use them or you cannot use them. And I of course opted not to use them. So it's essentially got a muffler delete. There's no mufflers on the car. It's just a cat back system though. I'll include links to the videos where I actually went and bought the exhaust second hand because I don't think they actually make this kit anymore. I could be wrong though, but I'll include links to the video chronicles where I installed this and the problems that I ran into. But for still having a full exhaust, factory manifolds, factory H pipe and cats, the SLP loudmouth system is definitely the loudest you can go. And I love the sound of it. I can't wait to hear it with headers. Wait, what? And next, moving into the interior where there are some of my favorite mods done to this thing. Now, first things first, starting off small, I do have a Delrin C5R shift knob. Feels great to shift with. Yep, kind of looks awkward. You'll definitely get a few comments, but same one in the C5R, except for it's black. And it does feel really nice to shift and it puts your hand very, very close to the steering wheel. So you can shift quick and get right back to the steering wheel. Then of course, one of the mods that I'm asked about the most, one of my most viewed C5 Corvette videos is this. Now this is the Pioneer MVH 1400 NEX. This thing's absolutely great. Let me get the key going so you can at least see it. Now that we've got my iPhone hooked up to it, 
Apple CarPlay. This thing is awesome, super high definition, very, very reactive to touch. You don't even wanna know how much time I spent researching on double DIN touchscreen radios like this. I really wanted this thing to be perfect. I did tons of research. I didn't want that like squishy plastic screen that some aftermarket double DIN radios have. I didn't want this to look like I put it in myself, which unfortunately because of some of the fitment it does a little bit, but again, I install all of this myself and I am an idiot. So if you do have a professional do this, I'm sure it would come out amazing. But even the way that I did it, it looks so good. It looks factory, it's clean, it sounds amazing. I have Apple CarPlay, I have Waze. Hands down, probably, if not the best mod that I've done to this thing. Now, as for the surrounding double din bezel, I used, I think it's called EcoTrick. Again, I'll link it down in the description below. It's not the metric kit that everyone uses because that one was way too expensive for my taste. But this one fits amazing. As you can see, all the fitment is really, really good. And I painted it using all Color Bond products. I'll link those down in the description too. Again, one of my hands down favorite mods that I've done to this thing it completely updates the interior. Doesn't feel like you're in an old C5 Corvette anymore. And it's so cool to have all of the features of a newer Corvette, like, you know what I mean, like having navigation and a touch screen and having Apple CarPlay or Android connectivity, having all of that stuff in your older car is amazing. And I'll include links to all of the harnesses and special amps that I had to use so that I can use this aftermarket doubled in with the Bose sound system. So it sounds really, really nice. And back to the exterior for the last mod, which is suspension. Now the whole car is lowered front and rear on VMS racing bolts. And it really, really lowered this thing. As you can see, she's low. She's very, very low. It's just the way I wanted it. I think the car looks absolutely amazing with these lowering bolts. And same with all of the other mods that I did. I did tons and tons of research to make sure I wasn't putting just some crappy part, especially suspension part, on a car that handled so well from the factory. I didn't want to ruin the ride. Granted, it does stiffen it up a little bit, but gosh, now that it's this low going around corners, whew, it grips. It grips and I definitely felt an upgrade going around corners. This thing goes right in, hugs the corners. It's amazing. And it looks so good now. So again, I'll include links to all of the mods that I have on my Corvette down in the description below for you guys to check out. And I'll also include a playlist of all the videos where I either installed or had someone install the parts that I talked about in this video. Majority of the installs I did myself and I have some pretty good walkthroughs like for the buy LED headlights, which beforehand I had buy Xenon headlights from Sharplight. So I have a video of the conversion and everything. Definitely more stuff coming to the C5, stuff that I don't wanna tell you yet in case it doesn't happen, but still trying to get some pretty insane stuff. I'm giggling talking about it because it's it, it's gonna be pretty cool if it all works out, but I've got some pretty cool stuff in the works for this thing and I'm hoping it works out, but I can't do it without your guys' support. So go down, smash that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. It really, really helps out the channel and it helps the Corvette grow. But I'll see you guys next time. Happy motoring.